afternoon and welcome to our webinar for libraries about the upcoming Globe Observer Mosquito Habitat Photo Challenge, um, which will be July 25th through August 25th. Uh, a couple of notes, the slides from today will be available as Google Slides and we're also recording today, which we'll make available to libraries. And we'll put the link in the chat where you can access the slides and all of the links from today. So today we're gonna share some background on the project particularly things that we think will be of interest to libraries. You'll hear examples from some of our library partners and learn more about the data challenge and how to participate and some resources that are available for libraries for your programs. So uh, Cassie, would you start this slide deck? Okay, so why don't we start with some introductions if you could go to the next slide. And Cassie, why don't you go first? Hi, uh, my name is Cassie Sofing. I'm the Globe Mission Mosquito Campaign Coordinator and the Informal Education Lead for the Globe Mission Mosquito Project. And I'm with the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. And I'm Teresa Schwerin. I work with Cassie at the Institute for Global Environmental Strategies. And I lead a NASA project called the NASA Earth Science Education Collaborative. I'm also our liaison with public libraries and libraries in general. Uh, my background is in library and information science, particularly starting out with public libraries. And for the past 20 plus years, I've worked on NASA projects to engage the public in NASA Earth Science. And if you go to the next slide, one of our largest activities under the NISIC project is Globe Observer Citizen Science, which is part of the International Globe Program, uh, which has been around for over 25 years, but in 2016, the Globe Observer app was released, which extended the GLOBE program for K-12 education to out of school audiences. Um, and so using a free mobile app, the public can take observations that either complement or help to interpret NASA Earth satellite data. Things like observing clouds, tree height, and particularly for this data challenge, mosquito habitats and land cover. And if you go to the next slide, because of our focus on out of school audiences, we developed a toolkit for informal educators. And because libraries, because libraries play a unique role in their communities and local STEM ecosystems, um, working with libraries has been a key focus for our community building strategy. So we started field testing activities in 2018. And you can see on the map here, the libraries that we recruited and have been working with to try out these activities. One of our key partners um, has been Los Angeles Public Library and Vivian Bird leads the Los Angeles Public Library Neighborhood Science Program. And Vivian is here with us today. And if you go to the next slide, uh, you'll see photos from several library programs. Many of these are from Los Angeles Public Library. Um, Vivian, I'll turn it over to you. If you could talk a little bit about what you've been doing with the Neighborhood Science Program and particularly things related to Globe Observer and mosquito habitats and land cover. Sure. Um, thank you for having me. And um, just very quickly, so we've done, uh, before the pandemic, we've done some in-person programs, as you can see in the photo here. Um, but um, I want to focus a little bit more on what we did um, since the, the, uh, the pandemic uh, took place. So we've done some virtual programs. We practically moved all of our programs to online. I think that's happening to probably most of the libraries. And um, so what we did is we were looking for partners that can help us to um, provide more of the expert, um, I guess, aspect of, of the program. So uh, we were very fortunate that we were uh, able to work with the uh, Greater Los Angeles Victor Control District, that they actually have an outreach um, educational program um, that they use a a picture book and also a very simple craft to engage families to um, you know talk about it to to really talk about mosquitoes and really raise awareness about the mosquito uh, issues in our in our communities and so one thing that we found um, that's really a good tie-in to Globe Observer app is that if you can 
um, bring the focus to how mosquito is impacting your community. If you can bridge those two, it will get definitely get more people interested and wanted to attend the program. So that's what we did. And then um, so we actually did it with like three different programs and one was actually hosted in completely in Spanish. So um, I will highly recommend if you have a Victor Control District or uh, a unit uh, department in your city, make sure you you know kind of reach out to them and see if they have any outreach program. Pretty much they all do these days. Um, so then after they did their part, we went ahead and transitioned into uh, talk about Global Observer, how everybody can go out and look for mosquito larvae and that larvae don't bite. So <laughs> I think a lot of people, when they think about mosquitoes, the first thing that comes to them is, well, I don't want to get bitten. I don't want to go out there. That's dangerous. But so we have to really tell them that, you know, the mosquito larvae, they're, they're like a little squiggly things and they don't bite. And, you know, but um, once you, you finish observing them, you do want to toss all the standing water and, you know, let them dry it out so you don't let, give them a chance to grow into uh, adult mosquitoes. That's when they will start bite you, biting you. So um, that was interesting. And um, looking at the slide here, you, you can see that we also created what we call the uh, do-it-yourself or DIY circulating kits. And this one is particularly for the mosquito habitat mapper. We basically um, use extensively the uh, the resources on the Globe Observer site uh, on how to put together a kit like this. So you can see there's a little plastic pouch in the middle that basically allow everyone, whoever checks that out, they can build their own little uh, mosquito larvae trap um, that, you know, using a two liter bottle uh, uh, soda bottle, and then just use all the stuff that we have in there, they can build one. And that can help them trap. If if they were fortunate enough that having any standing water in their own balconies or backyard, that that would be a good way for them to do it. Uh, and then, you know, they they will, will go on also in the there's an instruction booklet in there that explain um, how to use Globe Observer to um, take a photo and record um, your findings and also how to identify three different types of uh, mosquitoes. So uh, it was very, very educational and people who attend our program really really learn a lot from that. Um, and I just want to quickly transition this to how things are going on right now to in the library world. So um, as things are getting better in terms of pandemic, we uh, our library system, 70 of the 73 locations of LA Public Library are currently open to the public. So we will start, we're slowly resuming our in-person programs. And I know um, in the world of libraries right now, everybody is thinking about, is still worrying about doing the indoor in-person program. So we're pretty much all of us are exploring the idea of doing outdoor in-person programs. And that is when we found out citizen science programs is perfect for, for outdoor in-person program. So um, one, we, one thing we have done is with the iNaturalist doing the, the um, uh, bio blitz but our um, neighborhood science branches which we have 18 of them right now they're also um, going back and using globe observers to do outdoor programs including observing clouds which is, can be done easily you don't need to even have a tent or table or anything you can just gather people outside you know just step you know right outside your your um, entrance and then um you can definitely do mosquito habitat mapping. Most of the libraries you will find, some of them have like planters and stuff. That's where they can look for standing water. So, you know, these are all perfect um, for outdoor in-person programs. So um, again, if any one of you here is looking for ideas to do outdoor in-person programs, I highly recommend you all please explore Globe Observer because the modules in there, they're all, they're all perfect for that. Um, I'm going, oh, so going back to the, the cats, um, basically we will be resuming the circulate, uh, the, the checkouts for circuit leads, um, what we call neighborhood science DIY kits starting this coming fall. So there are some updates that we will be doing, but um, if you're looking for an idea to put together kits like these, feel free to, to reach out to me. And again, um, go to Globe Observer's website. They have like activities, they have, all the you know the fact and stuff you know fact sheets and everything you can just download those and then quickly put them into a, a, a kit it's very easy to do <laughs> thank thank you vivian what i love about what you did is mm -hmm. is you made opportunities out of 
you know, not being able to be open to the public and now having needing to really focus on outdoor activities. You've really made this work and you've made it work in terms of finding local experts and making connections locally that made science very concrete and very relevant and very personal to your patrons. So I, I really love what you've been doing. And so the, the links on this slide um, are to your profile on the Globe Observer site, which talks a little bit more about how you've used the Mosquito Habitat Mapper uh, presentation you did for a library webinar we did last year. And you talked about how you transitioned your programs uh, from in person to online um, and an additional video on how you have done the trees challenge as part of your program or done trees as part of your programming. So we've got lots of examples that um, you're leading the way for other libraries. So I thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide, which brings us to why we're here today. So scientists need your help. They need your photographs. Uh, we have a challenge coming up July 25th through August 25th. And if you go to the next slide, one thing that um, I also pick up on what Vivian said earlier, safety first. So while our investigation focuses on mosquito larvae, these are immature developmental stage of mosquito that lives in water. They do not bite. They do not pose a health hazard. Um, they don't transmit disease. However, whenever there are larvae, there may also be adult mosquitoes. So we always want to practice safety um, and remind folks that when you're outside during mosquito season, it's always a good idea to use insect repellent, long sleeve shirts and pants. And as, as Vivian noted, clearing or covering standing water, that improves the safety of your community. So participating in this is also a way to help your local community. So if we can go to the next slide and Cassie, I'm gonna hand it off to you to talk a little bit more about the science and the challenge and how to do the observations. Thank you, Teresa. Most of the time when we give presentations about NASA and mosquitoes, their first thing is NASA mosquitoes from space, can you really see them? And the answer obviously is no, you can't see mosquitoes from space, but you can see the environment in which mosquitoes thrive in. And NASA satellites measure precipitation, humidity, um, soil moisture, um, and the vegetation, and all of the things that contribute to a very robust mosquito um, population. And so what we are asking is for citizen scientists to be our boots on the ground. And so we're combining two of our tools in our Globe Observer app. The first tool is the uh, Mosquito Habitat Mapper, and the second tool is Land Cover. And combining these two, we can find the mosquito larvae, but we can also find the habitats that mosquitoes um, thrive in. Here we have an image of a satellite um, and how it's taking measurements from space and translating that to on the ground. And the green dots in this particular case represent um, an area of interest. And so um, it's from a project that we're working with with students. But if we take land cover observations at regular intervals, and then while we're out taking land cover, taking a look at mosquito, if it's a potential mosquito habitat, we're validating what the satellites are seeing from space. And so why this particular challenge? Um, there are actually four land cover teams and one mosquito team that are looking for looking at um, imagery to train their artificial intelligence um, programs with. And when they do that, they're coming up with more predictive models. So for example, we have a video that we'll play here of our scientist in Florida. Using the app, you can just take a pic. They want to take a picture of a mosquito larvae and be able to tell you what genus it's from and which genus is potentially hazardous to our health and which one carries the disease vectors for diseases.
Now it's going to take more than one or two images. So we're looking for thousands of, of larvae images and thousands of land cover images. And so we are looking for lots and lots of things. In order to get started, what do you need? Well, you basically just need a smartphone smart device with a clip on magnifier. Um, your phone has great resolution, but in order to see a larvae, which are just a few millimeters, we need a 60 power or better magnifier. Um, downloading the Globe Observer app is free. You just register for an account using your email address, and then you log in and you're ready to go. Um, we're looking for water sources. Water is the potential breeding habitat for mosquitoes. Water in a container as small as a bottle cap discarded along the side of your house or a road or gutter is enough water for a female mosquito to lay her eggs. And so we're looking for those artificial containers as well as the natural containers. Um, and then taking the observations of the habitats using both of the tools I mentioned earlier, the mosquito habitat mapper and the land cover tool. The app, both of the apps walk you through step-by-step step how to make observations from your location and then work and walking you along the way. We've also created some pro tips for how to take a mosquito larvae photo using the clip-on magnifier. And we also have additional tutorials on different ways to collect water, how to take a look at mosquito larvae, and then to go further. So we have this diagram on the side for you to look at. Are there any questions as I go through? Okay. On the left hand side is the mosquito habitat map or tool, the home screen, and just some things to point out here that you'll notice. You'll see your login name at the top. Once you enter that, that's the last time you'll have to do it. And when you're ready to take a new mosquito observation, you click here. And we're asking for you to take a look at the artificial or the natural container that you've decided to look for your for larvae in. Pairing that with a land cover observation, that's where you get the real uh, forecasting uh, modeling that we can put together, mosquito habitats, mosquitoes with their habitats. Mosquito Habitat Mapper walks you through the steps and there are five steps, but for this particular challenge, what we need is your locate where and when, so your location. We'd like to know what the habitat is. Is it a pond? Is it a pool of water by a bird bath or a tree? Uh, maybe you're doing some science collecting of data and you've made your own mosquito habitat trap and you take a picture of that. And then any larvae that you should happen to see. And depending on your weather conditions from the time you set out your trap, give yourself between seven and 10 days because the warmer it is, the faster the eggs will mature. Mosquito larvae are kind of like the canary in the coal mine. They're very sensitive to climatic conditions. Sample the water, collect the larvae, take the pictures, and then take a picture of where you got your water sample from. Again, the breeding habitats can be literally anywhere. Discarded tires around a garage, for example, drainage sewers, um, storm drains. Uh, if you collect water for gardening or for drinking, if it's not covered, it's also a potential breeding habitat. Standing water, bird baths, dog dishes, plant areas, rain gutters along a house, for example. If you're in a, in a high rise, it could be a pool of water in a small impression along on your deck. Tire tracks, for example, if you live in a rural area, um, even animal footprints can collect enough water for a mosquito to lay her eggs. Trash dumps or dumpsters around businesses or you know, larger community areas. And even your trash cans, if they have a kind of a lid with a, a indentation on it or cups or bottles, they're all contain potential breeding habitats that you could look at and then take the pictures. 
Now pairing this with land cover, you would almost be done. So land cover, once you're done with your observation and your photographs, you click to go to land cover. And if you do this every time you find or take a mosquito observation, you're providing much more data for our scientists because they need to know where in the big scheme of things did you find your water. So you click on making a new land cover observation and it looks very similar. There's a quick tutorial that you'll have to do the first time, but after that, you're good to go. Again, the location. And if you find that your location is more than if it's 65 meters or more, that's not very accurate. But if you click the reset button that my arrow is pointing to two to three times and you can get that down to about 10 meters, you're you're doing pretty good. The, the smaller the number, the better, the more accurate your, your smart device would be. Now and with land just... cover, what you're looking for are the types of conditions. Is it snow? Is it, well, obviously we hope there's no snow in mosquitoes. But standing water, if it's muddy, is there dry ground that maybe 90% of it would be dry? And are there leaves on the trees? And you simply put check yes, no. And then when you're ready, you're going to take the pictures. And you'll end up taking six pictures. And there's a built-in uh, guidance system right in your tool. And if you hold your camera, your phone up, you'll get this the sky, the upward one, and you go north, south, east, and west, simply lining up the, the circles in the center. And as you do that, it will automatically take the pictures for you. And so you're good to go on that. You don't have to do any analysis. If you wanted to go further, you certainly could. And by going further, what it means is taking a look at the area around you and deciding how much of it is grass covered, for example, how much could be paved parking lot, how much of it has shrubs or trees. And what you're doing is you're, again, helping verify what the satellites see from space to what actually is on the ground at your particular location. You can choose to save your observations and send later because oftentimes when you're out in the field, you may not have good cell connection or a Wi-Fi connection. So you can choose to save those images, both in the mosquitoes and the land cover, and then click to save later. And then this is what we're building. This is from some of our um, African and European uh, globe observers, but we actually see the images then. Any questions so far? I don't see any questions yet. So we know that taking photographs of mosquito larvae may need a little bit of information ahead of time. So what we've done is we've made, we call it some pro photo tips. And we have a one page handout that is available for you to download and you can print it out and use or you can keep it on your phone and take a look at it. But basically, taking the small handheld clip on magnifier that you can obtain in lots of different places for under $10. So I could price a, a cup of coffee. You're going to turn the light on. All of the clip-on magnifiers need light for illumination. And you clip that over the focal area of your, of your smartphone or your device, center the circle, and then put it straight down right into the water. The clip-on magnifiers have a little plastic cover so they won't get the lens wet. You, but you need it down so that you can um, keep your focal length consistent. And the scientists at the University of uh, South Florida are looking for six pictures. They need two full body pictures, and that includes the head all the way through to the siphon, and two pictures of the tail section, focusing again in on the hair sections, and then one of two pictures of the head and the thorax. And those are diagnostic features that will help our scientists to, to train their AI for the uh, genus of the mosquito larvae. And Teresa, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Cassie. So now we wanted to talk a little bit about what are some of the resources that can support our library partners in their programming. Um, so three things we're going to talk about, some mosquito larva kits 
and ongoing support that we can provide to our library partners. Uh, we have some additional examples from library partners that we think you'll find useful as you think about your programs. And then some resources, templates, shareables, activities, games, books, videos on demand, uh, some of the things that Vivian mentioned earlier. So if you go to the next slide. So we have mosquito larva kits and ongoing support that we can provide to our library partners. So on the left there, um, you'll see some of the things that we can provide if folks want to sign up and be our partner in this challenge. Uh, as Cassie had talked about some of the things that you need, one of the things that you need is this little clip-on magnifier. Uh, they're not expensive. They're typically under $10, but we know it takes time to order these. And we do have supply of these. So we're offering to those libraries that want to sign up and offer programming and do the challenge that they can order a kit. They can apply to get a kit and a kit includes five of these scopes and an initial set of some supplies to, to get started. We will provide ongoing support as throughout the challenge. If you have questions, if you want suggestions of activities, advice, resources, Vivian generously offered if you want to reach out to her and some of our experienced librarians um, to give you some advice on what you can do and how you can incorporate this into your programming. We're also tracking and mapping participation and can and share with you so you can share with your patrons uh, what your mosquito habitat photo map looks like for your region. So what we're asking for partners or for people who would like to be partners uh, to complete a brief Google form, and we'll give the link to that at the end, to commit to take and submit mosquito and land cover observations and photos using Globe Observer. If you have a program that this could fit into, uh, Vivian mentioned some of the things that they're doing. That might be one option. You might want to use challenge as a way to um, develop your staff expertise in citizen science and doing the Globe Observer observations. You might make it an internal challenge with your team and use it as a staff development activity for next summer's mosquito season, but give photos now that we need. Um, and then we would like for you to provide us information back on events you do conduct. This is information that you're probably already collecting on you know the dates and the number of people participating if you do events. So if you go to the next slide, and I think that has a link to the Google form that you would fill out. We, we have a limited supply and we'll honor requests as these supplies last and we'll start shipping these out July 9th. So act now if you'd like to get one of our kits. Uh, the next slide, please includes um, some more examples on the next couple of slides from two of our library partners. And these were libraries that helped to pilot Globe Observer and Globe Observer activities. The first one is LaSalle Public Library in Illinois. Uh, LaSalle is a library that serves a rural population. Um, the libraries that we picked to pilot the activities range from very large library systems like Los Angeles Public Library that has over 70 branch libraries, um, as Vivian noted, that, that are now open, they have even more than that, um, to LaSalle Public Library, which is a single library location. And Donna Blumquist is, is pictured here. She's a programming librarian at LaSalle. And uh, the text here is from a profile that we have of her on the Globe Observer site, talking about how she's done programming using Globe Observer. And the quote here is particularly about the Mosquito Habitat Mapper and some of the things that they've done They've also made it local, like Los Angeles Public Library did. They have neighborhood walk programs. Um, LaSalle is a river town, and many of these unwanted mosquito habitats are found in debris and litter along the Illinois River. So they use that to place an emphasis on litter cleanup to remove um, artificial mosquito habitats. And so you can read her profile, learn more about their programming. Um, LaSalle has also given presentations with us about their programming. Uh, they developed an activity on gratitude rocks where science and art meet. It's a STEAM activity related to um, the Globe Observer trees app and tool. But so we've got some presentations there that I think you'll find interesting. And some of the photos there show. Um, 
some of their their teens that were doing an activity as part of a nearby nature preserve where they set out mosquito traps, they put signage, letting the public know what they were doing. So it had lots of interesting angles to how they did that. So if we go to the next slide, our other pro library partner, the Pioneer Library System in Oklahoma. Um, and to the library staff there, Rachel Freak and Sarah Queensbury uh, gave a presentation as part of our Globe Mission Mosquito webinar series. You can watch their presentation on a program that they did the summer before last. They were part of an activity that we call Go Oklahoma, working with some local scientists who wanted the Mosquito Habitat Mapper observations. And you can see in the middle there a mural that they painted on their computer lab and did programming for adults. They also did programming for eight to 13 year olds. On the right side, you can see one of the local scientists that they worked with. I think that's great advice that Vivian gave earlier that you can also see reflected here. Find some local experts that can, can help you out. So you can watch their webinar and learn more about what they did. If you go to the next slide, uh, some other resources to support our partners. We have a, a Google folder with things like this presentation that you can make a copy of. You can edit it and make it your own. It has um, presentation templates. It's got the one pager photo tips that Cassie mentioned earlier, promotional materials, social media shareables. Um, so this is a nice handy place where you can download these things to use to help develop and to promote your programs. If you could go to the next slide, please. So one of the things that we have is a challenge activity tracker. And this is a nice handy way to collect lots and lots of activities um, across mosquito, the mosquito habitat mapper and the land cover tool uh, related to that. And so there is a PDF that shows how these activities are organized under topics, observe, learn, engage, and create. This is also a hyperlinked page on the mosquito habitat challenge page. So you can go there and even though there's like one raindrop there is more than one activity. So there are lots of activities that you can choose from. And these help to go beyond taking and submitting observations. It really connects with your community in lots of different ways for them to learn about, create, and engage during the challenge period. And so we're going to give you a, a taste of what some of these activities are. So if you go to the next slide, uh, the first category is create. And so learning about the connection between mosquitoes and land cover by completing these creative activities. And you go to the next slide, you can see what some of these are. On the left, we've got exploring land cover with blocks, with building blocks. We've got a link to the activity and also a video demo, a short two-ish, two, two three-minute video demonstrating how to do the activity. And on the right, creating a mosquito habitat map, and again, a, a link to download this activity, as well as a video demo. If you go to the next slide, Vivian had mentioned building a, a mosquito larva trap is one of the things in their DIY kit. And pictured there is Dr. Rusty Lowe, who is our lead science lead for the Mosquito Habitat Mapper. And she talks about and gives a demo of how to build a trap and, and why the state is important to NASA. And you can watch the video demo as well as download the activity. Another idea is to create a poster about mosquitoes. And the poster shown here is from a, a school in Brazil that we worked with. And you could see what that young person learned as a result of participating in uh, Globe Observer Mosquito Habitat Mapper observations and the program at their school. You go to the next slide. The next category is, is learn, learning about the connection between mosquitoes and land cover with these activities. So a couple are shown on the next page. And on the left is a publication I think a lot of libraries will be interested in called the Zika Zine, uh, which is an educational comic um, that's about 
not only mosquitoes, but particularly specifically about the Mosquito Habitat Mapper and walks you through, you learn a little bit of background about the life cycle of mosquitoes, about why you're making the observations and how to make the observations. It's available in 10 languages. You can download it. We have a link to a video with the author, Lisa Gardner, uh, which is very engaging. And if you see on the left, uh, we also have lots and lots of videos that you can either use in your program or for your own professional development to learn more about the science and how to make the observations. We've got book lists, blog posts, articles, lots and lots of content to help you. Go to the next slide. And so observing. And if you go to the next slide, some of the activities include, um, these are some investigations from the Mission Mosquito Science Notebook, uh, which includes a companion guide for parents and caregivers. Uh, it includes investigations like a mosquito larva hunter's training uh, and the mosquito habitat survey. So uh, if you're working, this is targeted at around middle school ages, but I'll tell you a lot of these activities are useful for all ages and can be adapted up or down. So please check these out. And if you go to the next slide, engage. And the next slide, ways to engage your community. If you use social, we ask you to tag, hashtag, use a hashtag mosquito challenge. And also follow us on social. Throughout the challenge, you'll, you'll see lots and lots of post about the challenge. Um, and hopefully you, you may even see your community if you, you um, tag us in your social. So, and on this slide, each of these is linked. So you can go to the, the Facebook page, the Instagram uh, account, the Twitter channel to YouTube uh, to connect with where Globe is on social. So go to the next slide, please. Uh, we also have a video resource library with lots and lots of short videos that have been um, accumulated over the last couple of years. Some of these have been parsed out of larger webinars. These are things that are maybe a few minutes or less long. They're very practical. You can incorporate them into your presentations. You can use them for your own professional development. Uh, but very practical, go through things like how to use a clip-on magnifier, how to do water sampling, um, uploading your observations, identifying mosquitoes. So check these out as well. And if you go to the next slide, I think that's our last one. And so we certainly, if you think about it, uh, do you have an existing program that might be a good fit for the challenge? Or if you're interested in partnering with us, we'd encourage you to reach out to either Cassie or myself. Our email addresses are there. The Google form where you can apply to get one of the partner kits is there. Um, the challenge website where you find all of these activities and resources, and then the partner Google folder, which includes this slide deck along with the link. So, Cassie? That's all for me. Thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to getting lots and lots of libraries engaged in the challenge.